Our presentation is about Ellis Island. We went there last week and took a tour and uh, we're going to describe some of the things we found out. First, Grace and I talk about the process where it was like for immigrants to go to Ellis Island. And then Melissa going to talk about her family experience doing research into her background. Okay? So, let's go with Grace first. Hi, I'm going to talk about the first part of the process of going through Ellis Island. The different stages that the immigrant had to go through. Okay, first. One important thing to remember is that Ellis Island was only used for the poorest immigrants, the third class passengers. The first and second class passengers were um, processed on ship. Then they were taken to the docks when they got off. And then the ship was sailed to Ellis Island with the third class passengers still on board. When they finally landed at the island, they put on all the clothes they on because they were allowed to bring only one bag with the possessions from the old country. People are in all kinds of things, like you will see musical instruments or salad bars, parts for making tea. Some people brought earth from the old country too, or plants, vines for example, for growing grapes. Then the first life the first place they got to was the dining hall where they were given um, a meal that it was paid for by the steamship company. People who came to the island always remembered the meal. The food was apparently quite good, but it was always also strange for many of them. Some people had never tasted ice cream or seen an orange or a banana, for example. And then after that, the inspections began, and um, Arnie was going to tell you about that part. Arnie? Thank you, okay? Um, after the meal, the passenger was laid in the bags and got up the staircase to the Great Hall. And as they walked past, inspectors were dressed them carefully to see if they were weak or sick. If someone was sick, they would send them to the hospital. That was the hospital in Ellis Island as well, until they got better. They also were uh, the 10 children, young women and old people driving them along. About 20% of people would have back, often for health reasons, but most will is after a day or two or when someone came to pick them up. In the gray hall, they were in the line for hours, sometimes it's like five hours. They were crowded together, but it was often very hot and very loud, you can imagine. But then, when they finally got to the top of the line, the inspectors asked them questions like, Where do you come from? Where are you going? Is it really waiting for you? That kind of thing. And there were social workers and interpreters waiting with the inspectors, like helping people who needed to locate ranges or whatever. Once they got past that part, the questions, people would go under one of three lines behind the inspectors. The first line was for the detention center if they were being held back. The second line was for the railroad taking office for the train station. And the third line was down the stairs to the area where people were reading. There were there was the post there that was called uh, the casing post because that's where the seat of so many reunions, husbands with wives and fathers with children they had seen in years, and then the immigrants went up to start new lives. So now I'm gonna let Melissa talk about her family experience tracing the ancestors. Well, my great grandfather came in from Ireland, and my aunt John actually used El Southern records to do research and find where he came from. So I'm going to talk a bit about that. Basically, what we have El Southern was the ship records and the immigration information of every arriving passenger with the like the day that they came in, the age, and the town they came from. So um, if you know, for example, your ancestors' names, the year they arrived, or where he or she came from, you could them up. So that's what we did. My aunt John wants to know more about her grandfather, uh, my great grandfather. He died before he was born, but apparently he was a great musician. He played a fiddle and sang at family events. Uh, John knew they come from Cork in Ireland, but she didn't know where in Cork because she never spoke about it. So John went to Alison Records and she found my great grandfather's names and it gave the name of the town that he came from. So she went to Ireland and visited the town a couple of years ago. 
to get more information when she was there, and eventually she found a living relative, uh, a cousin, that she didn't know she had. It was great because she always wanted to know more about where the grandfather had come from. So, um, that's all we have time for, but we hope that you enjoy our presentation. Thank you. Đây là Solon đọc của mình.